forward. Now we've got a budding broadcaster here with uh, the radio show. He has a radio show. Let's talk a little bit about that radio show. It is starting to get noticed now that you have a little man cave, not you yourself, but the, the person who owns it, but you've been able to get big names coming through there, big political names to come in there and discuss issues and discuss anything that they really want to and anything that you need to ask. Let's talk a little bit about that radio show. That seems to be a real moment of pride for you as well. Well, it is cool. It's very cool because how many county supervisors get an audience, um, get an audience every week with their constituents? I mean, I have a weekly radio show. That's very cool. That's a great communication tool. What well, we've taken it and kind of turned it into. In addition to being a communication tool, it's also a tool that allows, especially during election season, allows our citizens to meet these candidates. The, the format for the show is not political. That's the, the best part about it. It's not political. The format for the show is you come on and just like you and I talk, well, we wouldn't talk about political stuff, really. i talk about you. Where'd you grow up? Tell me about your wife. Tell me about your kids. Tell me where you went to school. Tell me what you like to do. Tell me about your hobbies and those things. So people that are listening um, get a chance to say, wow, that guy really, guy or gal, is a real person. Mm -hmm. They happen to be running for attorney general or senator or like the show that's going tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow, we've got Senator McCain coming into studio. I mean, John McCain and I, you know, this guy was, you know, nearly the president of the United States and, and here we're talking in the man cave. It's funny, we talk about the man cave. The studio is down in, in Queen Creek, just outside of Queen Creek, and uh, my good friend Joe Carrero, it's his, it's his studio, his radio station, KQCK Live, uh, AM 1510. To we'll put that, that down on there the bottom you here. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Um, and the uh, it's in a it's in, it is in like the uh, ultimate man cave. It's got the the big screen TVs on the wall and the pool table and the video games and the neon signs all around, and it's got a desk with all the high speed microphones, sound equipment, all that stuff, and we sit down just like you and I are right now, and we talk about whatever what's on, on your mind. It's funny. I had uh, I had Sheriff Paul on not long ago. And anybody that's heard Sheriff Paul knows that when, when Paul gets on an issue, he just drives down into that issue. And I can't tell you how many times I had to stop him. I said, Paul, stop. <laughs> I said, Let, let's talk about this. I mean, it, a perfect example, he mentioned his, uh, his father was in the Korean War. And then he started going on to some border issue or something like that. And I was like, whoop, stop. Let's talk about your dad. And he's like, great. I mean, how often do you really get to talk about your dad and people kind of get to know you? Did you know Paul used to be an electrician? He's yeah. a school-trained electrician. Did not know that. See, stuff like that. It's cool. People appreciate it. You know, we average over 100,000 listeners on the show, which it's computer-based, so we know exactly how many computers are at least tuned into that radio station mm -hmm. at that time. We had J.D. Hayworth in studio um, a couple weeks ago. We had 199,600 listeners. Wow. We didn't break 200,000. Um, I imagine we'll break 200,000 tomorrow. Um, but it is a, a great tool for not only for the county, um, you know, for me to get out there and get the message out, talk about issues, mm -hmm. but it's a great tool for citizens to meet their leaders, their future leaders. And we have, I mean, we have all kinds of guests, people running for Congress, people running for Constable, mm -hmm. Justice of the Peace, uh, just about any, uh, state legislators, all these various offices come into the show, come into the man cave, and we sit down and we talk just like this. And it's not like a lot of shows where you get 10 minutes or 15 minutes just a snippet. Yeah. You know, two hours. Two hours sitting down, we take a couple breaks and throw some music in there. And, and Joe, invariably, Joe uh, Carrero, he puts on some stupid music or something, you know. <laughs> He'll put on some Boy George or something just to oh. embarrass the heck out of me. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's a great show and it's a great tool to communicate with right. constituents. And I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm really lucky to have the opportunity to use it. Yeah, as we're talking right here, do you ever foresee yourself having a career? 
in something like that? If you know, let's say if you get tired of politics, do you foresee yourself maybe someday we'll watch you on the, the big screen uh, on? Uh, you know, I, I, CNN, I think I have Fox, more of a face for radio than. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, gosh. You know, it's right now. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to talk and meet all these people. Um, the the cool thing about the computer is it's all it's web based. You can watch now. So just like we're talking here, you can watch these guys. And I call it I call it I jokingly call it the Wayne's World of radio. <laughs> we we really are Wayne's World because it is not uh, you know it's not stiff. Right. We talk even though we dress. I mean I've always got a tie on and you know we it's professional right. but it's relaxed. And I think a lot of our listeners really appreciate that, that they get to see these people mm -hmm. that they don't know, that they only see or hear on the news, and they get to talk to them. Right. I mean, we get to hear normal conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had Andy Thomas, guy running for attorney general. Andy Thomas is talking about how he's a big Miami Dolphin fan, you know, back from, oh. you know, 1972 when he, they were perfect season, and that's how he became a Dolphin fan, in addition to being a Cardinal fan. Um, <laughs> Got to keep that state in there, right? Exactly. <laughs> but cool stuff like that. They're 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 normal people, too. They're they're not just this stuff shirt or blouse running for public office. That is very interesting that you're able to get the real person out instead of them being able to dictate. Well, I want to just talk about this issue. Or you're able well, to talk well, about. Well, it's my show, yeah. and it is in the man cave. And it's funny how the atmosphere. It, because it is relaxed, it's not normal. It's not, it's not a stuffy studio. You come in there and you really do let your guard down. And, and, I, and, I, don't, and I don't throw hard questions at people. I don't want people to feel like they got sideswiped right. somehow. I wouldn't do that. We've both been in interviews where someone's trying to sideswipe you, and that, that just doesn't work. Our conversation is very, very light. And uh, once in a while, I'll ask something hard, you know. Tell me, how do you think you'll make it in Congress? Do you really understand what it's like to be one of 435? You know, and kind of, kind of quiz them and kind of get their brain thinking a little bit. So it's, it's good. For this edition of Conversation with Supervisor Brian Martin.